Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about history taking in child and adolescent psychiatry. I am Dr. Suresh Patatmat, Officer of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Unit at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to thank my teacher Shobha Srinath. She was the past HOD of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry at Nimans, Bangalore. She played an important role in drafting the assessment of children and adolescent clinical practice guideline which was released in 2019. You can go through this guideline which is available on Indian Journal of Psychiatry website. This presentation is based on this article. At the same time, I also would like to thank Dr. Rajendra K.M., Assistant Professor of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry in Nimans, Bangalore, for guiding me in making this video. Let's discuss about history taking and interviewing technique in child and adolescent psychiatry. Let's understand. The child and adolescent psychiatry is a super specialization in the branch of medicine that is basically psychiatry, which is focused on prevention of psychiatric disorder, early diagnosis and treatment and rehabilitation. Unfortunately, in psychiatry, including child and adolescent psychiatry, there are no investigations which can positively make a diagnosis of psychiatric disorder. That means we are left only with clinical skills and also interviewing technique. So the whole diagnosis and management relies on the clinical acumen and also the way the clinician is going to interview the child, observe the child and collect information from various sources. So child and adolescent psychiatry is a challenge for any physician. Let's understand what do you mean by child and adolescent. In this article and also in India, usually child means below the age of 12 years. Adolescent means between the age of 12 and 18 years. This is the definition we are using in this article and also in the video. Types of assessment, what we do in child and adolescent psychiatry. There are three types of assessments. One is screening, detailed evaluation and follow-up. Screening takes 10 to 20 minutes. I have made a video which is available on my channel. Please do go through that. Detailed evaluation takes 45 minutes to 60 minutes. There is a video which will be available shortly in my channel. Follow up in 20 minutes. So when you do these kinds of assessment, the whole assessment relies on the collecting information from multiple resources, observing the parent and child interaction, mental status examination of the child, school observation report if it is available, Observing the child response and reaction to the various environmental stimuli. So, the whole issue of assessment, diagnosis, management relies on the clinical skill of the psychiatrist. Let's discuss about how to collect information. What are the different information domains? There are three important information domains. They are from home, school, and social front. So these are the three domains where child and adolescent spend maximum time. From home, you can collect information from the parents, sibs, that is basically brother, brother and sister, and also relatives or, or any other caretaker can give valuable information. From the school front, teacher and the classmate. So it is not only the school. Sometimes children do attend various tuitions. So asking information from the tuition teacher also plays a very important role. From the social front, how does the child interact with friends, neighbors? Those are the issues we have to collect information. So these are the three, four, three fronts where we have to collect information. But however, after the lockdown, there has been a fourth front which has come in, that is social media. Many of our adolescents and also young children are interacting with friends, with the world in through social media. So in this social media, many a time children and adolescents are discussing about their problems, issues, expressing themselves in social media to their friends and also to the strangers. Here, we can get a valuable information. However, we need to balance between the autonomy or confidentiality of the child or adolescent versus best interest of the child if the child has some serious problem. Hence, we need to collect information from all these four domains if required. Approach to Child and Adolescent Psychiatry 
Depending upon the age of the child and the cognitive development, we need to interview the child. If the child is an infant or toddlers, we have to be relying on three important sources of information. One is interviewing the parent. So both father and mother, if you are able to interview, will be getting good information regarding the child. And also observing this infant or the toddler, how do they interact with the world? Same time, parent-child interaction will give you valuable information how the child is interacting with the parents, the attachment, at the same time, how the parents are responding to the child's need. So here, the three-prong approach plays a very important role. However, if the child is two to three years, the psychiatrist needs to interact with the child and also an attempt should be made to talk to the child. So please do keep this in mind. If the child is between three to seven years, we need to interview the parents. At the same time, we need to interview the child while engaging the child in a play. At the same time, your questions should be simple and direct questions should be there. We should not use double negative questions or a complex sentence to ask question. It should be very simple. Do you like your dad? Do you like your mom? These are the simple direct questions should be asked, not a complex sentence. When you engage the child in a play, you can build a rapport and also collect information during the play. Moving to the interviewing the child between the age of 7 to 12 years. This is the time the child is highly emotional, looking for identity, identity in the social scenario. It wants the emotional recognition. During this time, you have to engage the child in the play at the same time interview the child. You have to be flexible. This is 7 to 12 years are very crucial. Hence, you have to have a positive approach. At the same time, you need to ask for the concerns of the children, especially in this area. That is between the age of 7 to 12 years. Interviewing the adolescent. That is children between 12 to 18 years. Whenever you do the interview, before you talk to the parents, please do talk to the adolescent. Ask why they have been brought here. Do they have any idea about this consultation? And what may be the reason their parents have brought them here? Hence, be open, respect, have privacy, confidentiality and autonomy of the adolescent. At the same time, please do educate them about the limitation of the confidentiality in this setting, especially with regard to abuse, physical abuse or any sexual abuse or any danger to the child will be revealed to the parents and the required authorities. Alerting information. Here, the child many a time may not be able to speak or else the adolescent, if he has been brought against his wish and will and he believes that he doesn't have any problem, in such a scenario, he may not reveal any information or else reveal what is happening in his mind. In such a scenario, you have to collect information from various sources. Interviewing the parents and sibs, grandparents, caretakers, friends becomes a valuable source of information. Interviewing the child and adolescent is very special that you have to engage the child in a play and try to get the information. But as adolescent, talk to them first, ensure about confidentiality and also autonomy and discuss with them about the confidentiality limitation and go ahead with taking the history. But Observing the child during the play gives a huge amount of information. This when the child plays, you have to have this non-directed, unstructured interview, observing the child for the activity level, what is the attention span, ability to tolerate, tolerate frustration when the child is unable to build or construct anything through the toys, or else if a toy is being taken away from the child, how does the child behave? Creativity, creativity level of the child, looking for approval from the parents or the loved ones. Use of colors, pens, papers, puzzles also give valuable information regarding the creativity and also the intellectual capability of the child. At the same time, observing the child play is important because it, is, it gives a valuable information with regard to cognitive abilities, fine motor skills, sensory abilities, seeing, 
hearing so, and also touch. So these are the sensory abilities you can appreciate. Coping with frustration, emotional response, rapport building. At the same time, when the child is playing, the a child and adolescent psychiatrist will intervene appropriately to gather information from the child. At the same time, you also should make attempt to look at the parent and child interaction. As soon as they enter into the clinic, in the waiting hall, how the interaction is occurring between the child and the parents, how the seating arrangement is there, when the child parents come into the clinic and in the interview room, how do they seat themselves where the child is, whether it is with the mother or with the, pay, with the father, or else a third party has brought the child, maybe grandfather or an uncle has brought. Child is comfortable with whom? Is child looking for reassurance? Parents' response and reaction to the child's behavior and needs. So all this information you have to observe and get it. This observation starts as soon as the child enters. Until the child exits, you have to collect the information. Is not just only when they are in the interview room. Interview settings. This is very essential because children and adolescents get intimidated in a hospital setting. Many a time, parents will be threatening the child that I will take you to the doctor to give some injections. Hence, when they come to the hospital, they will be very intimidated. They may not open their mouth. Hence, the interview room should be slightly different and it should be a safe place. So that the child can explore the clinic. At the same time, walls should be play painted in bright colors with cartoons. Play, play space should be available for the child so that they can move around. So that we can see the motor abilities and also how the child is exploring the world at the same time looking at their parents. Interview room requirements. In the interview room, you need to have certain toys, stuffed toys, puppets. At the same time, you need to have emoticons, toys and cards. This is basically, especially in the younger children and also adolescent, they are well used with these emoticons or smileys in the mobile phones. So, showing these emotions will be able to ask whether they are happy, sad, frustrated. So, these cards and also these toys becomes handy. Paper, pencil, sketch pens. Drawing sheets, drawing board, board games, color chalk piece, crayons, clay, alphabets, number cards, puzzles. If possible, gender neutral toys is very useful to assess various aspects of the child. Who are these who are going to do the assessment? Undergraduates and postgraduates who have been trained in the assessment of child and adolescent population. Public care doctors, nurses, psychologists, social worker, and family members. Their family members are being told the reason being is they need to know what are the doctors or nurses or psychologists or social worker are going to expect or the information which is required. If the family members know about these assessments, they will be prepared and will help the doctor in making the diagnosis. Detailed evaluation. The objective of the detailed evaluation is usually to know whether there is any serious medical condition or there is any organicity. Does the child require any IP care, rapport building, temperamental history, developmental issues, environmental background, attachment issues. These issues need to be assessed on detailed evaluation, either in the OPD or else, even in the inpatient, the detailed evaluation can be done same time, when you are doing detailed evaluation, don't forget to ask about protective factors, vulnerable factors, the child interest, hobbies, skills and talents which are very useful during psychosocial therapy, past treatment details and responses and also to arrive at a diagnosis, these all information is very essential and also to plan for comprehensive management that is assessment, investigation, medication or psychosocial management. Hence. Clinical interview, multiple resources like family members, parents, grandparents, sibs, relatives, friends, school teachers play a very important role. But however, at the same time, 
clinical interview method has its own limitation. First and foremost, child and adolescent may not open up easily because of the intimidating environment of the hospital and they are in the new environment and they have to talk to a stranger about their problems or else they may not have insight into their problem. Hence, they feel that they are normal and the parents have brought them unnecessarily. Sometimes the biological needs like hunger and the child wants to go to the toilet. In such a scenario, the child may not speak at all. He wants to finish this interview and go back to attend for the biological needs. If the child is ill, else developmental needs. Imagine if the child is very anxious or fearful because of psychosis or because of depression, the child may not speak at all. If the child has mental retardation, they, it may not be able to comprehend your questions. Or else, if the child has difficulty in expression, speech, that itself also may cause hindrance in interviewing method. Hence, you need to collect inf information from multiple sources. But at the same time, remember, the information you are going to collect may vary from one person to another. The father may give a different story than the mother. And these do happens because the child behaves differently in different environment. It may not behave similarly in all environment. The child may be very active in the home, but in the school and the social situation, the child may become very shy and may not interact. Hence, the information provided by the parents may be child is normal socially, but in the social front and in the school, the child will be considered as very shy. Hence, the information provided may be reliable, but at the same time, it may vary from setting to setting. Hence, serial observation is required and information should be collected from multiple sources. Serial MSE, that is serial mental status examination, play a very important role in arriving at the diagnosis. And whenever you make a diagnosis, please do remember, especially in child and adolescent psychiatry, it is very difficult to get the information what is there in the children's mind. Their feelings, what they are experiencing. Their difficulties, how do they verbalize. These are all very challenging. Hence, unless you have seen the child multiple times, unless the child is very verbal and you are able to make classical, able to make a diagnosis very easily and the family members are able to give very good information, please don't make definitive diagnosis. Please do consider original diagnosis and before you go for a confirmatory diagnosis, please do multiple serial MSE maybe in the follow-up many times and then consider for the confirmatory diagnosis. However, depending upon the experience of the psychiatrist, many psychiatrists may be able to arrive at the diagnosis in the single sitting, maybe ADHD or else adolescent who has schizophrenia or mania can be easily picked up by an experienced psychiatrist or else a child and adolescent psychiatrist. Hence, the diagnosis depends upon not only where the parents observe and report the information at the same time the experience of the psychiatrist and also the wisdom and the clinical acumen and the skills of the psychiatrist play a very important role in diagnosis because the lab diagnosis are not there for diagnosing in child and adolescent psychiatry or else in psychiatry itself thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe